Welcome to the Sorcery Podcast, your sacred space to delve into spiritual tools, topics and practices that will illuminate your path of soul remembering and healing. I'm your host, Lija Costa, a soul guide, alchemist, soul writing coach and the creator of the Trust Pathway. I'm deeply grateful to have you here with me. Together, we will embark on a profound exploration of self-discovery and healing, unlocking the secrets that lie within. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sorcery Podcast. I'm Lija Costa, your guide on this journey of self-healing, soul awakening and embracing the truth within us all. And today we are diving into a topic that is both simple but yet very, very profound. And that is about the importance of sitting with our emotions and truly feeling our feelings. We live in a world that often teaches us to be strong, to keep moving forward, to push our feelings aside, to bury our feelings, to just get over it. But what if I told you that true strength lies in the courage to sit still, to let those feelings wash over us and to truly embrace them? That's what we are exploring today. And I would like to start by acknowledging something that many of us have experienced, and that is the tendency to avoid our emotions, right? So whether if it's sadness or anger, anger is a big one, fear or even joy, because if we feel that it's not appropriate to express our joy in a certain situation, we just avoid it or bottle it up. And so we tend to push these emotions aside and we tend to tell ourselves we'll deal with them later, right? Maybe you've done this too, you know, putting on a brave face or distracting, that's another big one, distracting yourself when something heavy arises. But the truth is when we set our feelings aside, They don't just disappear. Instead, they find a place to settle in our bodies, in our minds and our spirits. And if we don't deal with them quick enough, if we keep on avoiding or bottling it up, they then manifest into illnesses, chronic pains, discomfort in the body, And we don't even associate that with repressed emotions. How many times have you felt anxiety or tension or physical pain without making the connection of maybe a difficult feeling that you ignored? But the problem is it didn't go away. It just manifested in other ways. Because our emotions are like waves in the ocean. They are meant to move, right? They are meant to rise and fall. But when we resist them, we prevent that natural flow that it's necessary. And this is where the trouble begins. So why do we resist our feelings? I believe that one reason is that we live in a culture that hasn't traditionally supported emotional awareness or emotional regulation. We've been taught to value logic and productivity and action over intuition, over rest, over reflection. And if you think about it, it still happens these days, right? Because if, for instance, you are a person that values rest and you see the good impact of resting and reflecting in your life, But other people might label that as being lazy. So we still go through these things. Traditionally or culturally, we still have these labels. 
And so feelings are still seen as inconvenient or worse, weak. Something that has to be managed rather than embraced. But as the connection between our emotions and our physical health becomes clearer, more people are starting to recognize the importance of feeling our feelings. And this is where the magic happens. When we allow ourselves to sit with our emotions, really sit with them, we begin to heal. And I'm not saying this is easy. It's not. It's not always easy. It can be frightening to face sadness or anger or fear or the discomfort overall. But what I wanted to remember is that these feelings are not your enemy. They are a part of you, just as much as your joy or your love and your hope. And also, they carry messages. They try to tell you something. They have a wisdom with them that can be potentially transformational in your journey. So I would like to invite you to imagine a moment that sadness arises within you. Maybe it's triggered by a memory. Maybe it's triggered by a loss. Or even something that you can't quite put your finger on. Whilst you are here listening to my words and you close your eyes and you go back to a memory where you felt sad, deep sadness, cry if you must, don't repress that emotion, don't repress those tears if they have to come, let it come. And as you sit with the sadness, if you're starting to feel a pull to turn away from it, allow yourself to feel it fully. Take a deep breath and notice where in your body you feel this sadness. Maybe it's on your chest. Maybe it's on your throat. Maybe it's on your stomach. Where do you feel the contraction? Wherever it is, acknowledge it. Sit with it. Breathe into it. (sighs) Deep breath in. And out. (sighs) And then allow yourself to express it. Again, this could mean letting the tears flow. This can be journaling about what's coming up, or simply sitting in quiet contemplation. And if you feel called to do that, just pause this audio and go and do it. Go express those emotions whilst they are rising and let them flow, let them be expressed the way they need to be expressed. And then when you're ready, you come back to this episode okay by doing this you're not only honoring your feelings but you're also allowing them to move through you and here is the beautiful part when we allow our emotions to be felt they tend to move on more easily they don't linger as long they don't harden into something that weighs us down they simply flow right Just like the ocean that rise and fall, just like the waves that rise and flow in the ocean, or just like the rain that falls and nourishes the earth. It's the same. And I often use this metaphor of rain when I'm talking about emotions because it's something we all can relate to. When the rain falls, the earth doesn't resist it, right? It just receives it. It just allows itself to be nourished, to nourish the soil, to feel the rivers and to even carve out new paths over time. And our emotions work in much the same way. They are here to transform the landscape of our inner world. And sometimes they create space for new feelings to flow. Other times they provide the nourishment that we need to grow. And this is how transformation happens. 
we must allow the process. This means relaxing into our feelings, opening ourselves up to what they are trying to show us and receiving the gifts they offer, no matter how uncomfortable it might feel in the moment. Now, I want you to acknowledge that this is not an easy practice, right? Sitting with our emotions takes courage, especially in a world that often tells us to do the opposite. But I'm here to tell you that you are capable. If you needed a permission slip, this is your permission. This is your permission to sit with your emotions. You have everything you need within you to face whatever comes up. And remember, you don't have to do it perfectly. Perfection, it's another way of self-sabotage. And we had an episode all about how we self-sabotage in our healing journeys. So if you haven't listened to that one, go and have a listen because it's very, very insightful. But yeah, perfectionism is another way of self-sabotaging our healing journeys because there is no right or wrong way to feel, right? Your only task is to allow it, is to let your feelings be felt without judgment, without trying to fix them or to figure them out. And that's the thing. Most times we fear feeling our emotions or sitting with our emotions because we think we have to fix them. Because somehow we are judging the way we are feeling. Judging that we are wrong for feeling that way. Or that those feelings are wrong. And they need to be fixed. But they don't. Feelings are just there to be felt. You just need to allow them to move through you. So they can give you the wisdom that's needed. Give you the lessons that's needed. So that you can heal and grow without being repressed because then that repression of emotion is what's going to cause issues later on and the more we bottle it up the worse it gets you know mentally we start getting mental health issues physically we start getting chronic pains and chronic diseases and spiritually we start disconnecting from ourselves we get further and further disconnected from ourselves from our souls So it's really important that we just let the feelings flow. So next time you find yourself pushing a feeling aside, I invite you to pause. Just take a deep breath. Notice where that emotion is in your body. And instead of turning away, turn towards it. Sit with it. Let it be. And trust that in doing so, You are allowing yourself to heal in the most profound way. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to take a moment for yourself today, whether it's just five minutes or an hour or whatever you feel called to. Sit with whatever feelings arise and trust in your ability to process them, to integrate them. And remember, you're not alone on this journey. Your feelings are not too big or not too small or not too much or not too little. They are simply a part of your human experience and they are here to guide you home to yourself. Before I love you and leave you, I'll pull a card from the Trust Journaling deck. Hmm. And the card that came up is from the Reflection Suite. And the soul inquiry is... What do I tell myself about myself? How does it make me feel? What do I tell myself about myself? How does it make me feel? And the affirmation is, I am more than my circumstances dictate. Wow. Amazing, right? Maybe, if you haven't yet done the small exercise I did early in this episode... Maybe you can take a moment and just think about this. What do you tell yourself about yourself? How does it make you feel? So sit with that. Let the emotions arise. Sit with those emotions. Pay attention to how it feels in your body. And then let it be expressed. And if journaling is the way you feel called to do it, just journal about these soul inquiries. 
what do I tell myself about myself? How does it make me feel? Another perfect card for our episode. If you found this episode helpful, please give it a share with someone who might need to hear this message. And if you're ready to dive deeper into your own self-healing journey, I have lots of resources available on my website from the Trust Journaling deck, from an e-book, courses, masterclasses, all designed to support you in reconnecting with your inner wisdom and soul's calling. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for listening to the Sorcery Podcast and for holding space for this conversation. It is truly magical to be able to walk with you on this journey of soul healing and inner transformation. If you resonated with this episode and found it valuable, I would be grateful if you could leave a review on iTunes. Your feedback helps me reach more souls searching for guidance and healing. For more guidance and soul wisdom to support Soul Awakening Wingmen through the journey of alchemy, please visit my website www.lijacosta.co.uk Love and healing to all. See you on the next one.